Chavez, Slovakia. This is my wife here. Hello. She's, all right, so we have this. Uh, these are my green glasses, my favorite glasses even, and they're broke. So I get to spend money. <laughs> we need color ideas. Okay, the gold rims that I have on right now are pretty nice, classy with this shirt, very much like Swag Uncle. Okay. He was rocking in the 90s. We don't know what he's been doing since. <laughs> what do you think? I vote pink. Come on, I need like real ideas. Real I, ideas. I think that uh -huh. you are one of the few men who could pull off pink. I need you guys to understand, we have a hurricane coming in to Vegas, right? But I want to be the drip. You hear what I'm saying? I want to be... <laughs> That's my goal. The hurricane's not even coming to Vegas. It's going to Southern California. But, but it's making it rain here, actually. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it's because like the eye of the storm's hitting like the coast of them somewhere like by Monday mm -hmm. and it spans out wide enough to actually give us rain which means it's gonna flood we'll keep you posted we're yeah. just gonna stay home it's fine we're I mean, just gonna yeah, stay we're, we're just not gonna go anywhere just... <laughs> so Megalodons the Leviathan uh, it says the ultimate battle so uh, I'm assuming we're getting a little bit of a mashup here a little bit of a battle a little bit of a Big monster clash. I'm pretty excited. It's from Lindsay Nicole. I don't know where we're going with this. Like, is this gonna be like? Yeah, it's gonna be like a fight thing. I knew it wasn't gonna be sing songy, but I'm saying. I'm like, assuming it's gonna be facts versus facts, pros versus cons, in a clash of educational proportion. Teeth versus tails. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're going with. So, are you excited? I'm ready. Are you? Yeah. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Okay. Last but not least, my wife has been doing a good job editing my videos. I really appreciate the help. But if you could not title the videos about wife's wife, <laughs> that would be great. Okay, we'll get into that later. Just want to make that request in public before I forgot. Let's get into it. You got your headphones? Take a snack cracker. Ready? Three, two, one. Did you just steal my cheese? I don't know if you were gonna eat it with a crock. Why didn't you just get your own cheese? That's why you set it down. Yeah? I figured you didn't want it. I'm pressing play. Let's do it. The Megalodon was the largest shark to ever exist that we know of, mm -hmm. but they were not alone at the top of the food chain millions of years ago. Allow me to introduce you to the Leviathan whale, the only known competitor and potential predator of the Megalodon. Despite being lesser known, Leviathan inhabited the same waters at the same time as the Megalodon, competing for the same food sources, and they likely ate each other at least a little bit. So of yeah. course the question becomes, in a head-to-head -head battle, who would win? Right. Today we're gonna answer that question. I'm gonna introduce you to Leviathan, catch you up to speed on some new Megalodon research, and give you a winner based on the stats okay. presented to you. All right. I thought it was Leviathan. It's Leviathan? Specifically for this whale, yes. This is a Leviathan. Yes. This is not the same as Leviathan. Oh, man. Different things. Okay. I'm more excited because it sounds more real. Okay. Okay, but my confusion has been solved. <laughs> as always, we got to get the general information out of the way. I'm going to give you a well-rounded understanding of each of the species. So we're all on the same page about what the fuck they got going on. <laughs> Starting out with our main man, the Megalodon. Megalodon! Scientifically, Otis Megalodon. They were the largest sharks to ever exist that we know of and were alive between 23 to 3.6 million years ago, mm -hmm. aka a long fucking time. Yeah. Based on their fossilized teeth found on every continent Ooh. except Antarctica, they were all over the place, tearing shit up globally for about 20 million years. Their teeth, which could get to oh, about seven inches God. long, have been found in the bones of different prehistoric whales and seals, and bite marks on these bones even survived the fossilization process Jesus. over millions That's of years. Cool. If you watch my other recent video on prehistoric <laughs> sharks, aka ratfish, you know that sharks, skates, rays, ratfish, sawfish, all exist in a group called chondrichthys. Mm -hmm. Cartilaginous fish. They have skeletons made of cartilage, not bones. So their skeletons don't really fossilize. So all that's left is just a shit ton of teeth. Yeah. Only under extremely rare and perfect conditions can a little bit of this cartilage be preserved. And this has only happened a couple of times with megalodon fossils in the form of vertebrae. And I want to say part of their jaw. I thought that's I read that in one of the papers, but then I couldn't find it again. So take that for what it is. I take that with the trust that a student has with their sensei. I like, Thank you. I really like details like that. And I like that she's open about it because mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes I tell people stuff and I'm like pretty sure it's factual, but it could have also just been a dream I had. Right. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I just go, look, I think I have some, what I do with that is I take the specific details that I think I know yeah. and I just filter them out. 
and then just say maybe at the end. <laughs> you know, does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I try to, I get super specific in my brain, and I just go, none of that. It might be about uh, a man and a horse. Right. But I've also never considered the fact that some things might not fossilize, but obviously they wouldn't. Right, yeah. Especially in the ocean, with mm -hmm. all the sediments and things there. Obviously, you wouldn't have, like, you know, skeletons and full bodies of every right. fish that existed. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like yeah. she said that, I was like, oh yeah, like, like there were probably way uh, more species that we have no idea about. They just disintegrated. Just no fossil record. Yeah, they got zapped, like in an alien movie. I'm dead. Well, you ever seen like in the vampire movies when they stake them in the heart and they just like Turns missed away? Dust. Yeah. Yeah. So it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. They were onto something. The point is, most of what we know about Megalodon has been determined from their teeth, along with the ultra-rare cartilaginous remains and bite marks on their unsuccessful attempts to eat. This has led to a lot of different estimations and processes for determining those stats over the years. Which, by the way, science has known about Megalodon since like 1835. Wow. So, some changes have been made, to say the least. One thing that seems to be in agreement is they had a mouth like nobody's business, with 276 Don't. razor sharp teeth. Don't. You know who else don't. has got a mouth like nobody's business? It doesn't. We, you don't have to. You just don't have to. You know? You could simply not. <laughs> My wife's a megalodon. Huh? Send that in a text message. That's romantic. Seems to be in agreement as they had a mouth like nobody's business with 276 razor sharp teeth that, when combined, gave them a mouth that was 9 by 11 feet big, Jesus open Christ. wide. They could have no. swallowed you and your entire family at the same time. Well, that's probably the upper estimate, so let's just say you and a friend could have swallowed you and a pal. Their bite force also seems to have been nuts, with max estimates placing it at 40,000 pounds per oh. square inch. For comparison, yeah. humans have a bite force of like 120 pounds <laughs> per square inch. This is the strongest bite force of any animal to ever exist. Wow. You know what? What has fluctuated dramatically over the years is our understanding of their size, how big they can get. Early estimates put them at 80 feet long in 1909, even 100 feet long in 1922. I blame prohibition. Let me actually explain uh -huh. how science has even come up with those size estimates from just a shit ton of teeth. Okay. Drum roll, please. Ratios. Ratios. This is not going to turn into a math class, I swear to God. Scientists essentially take living species that are thought to be more closely related to the megalodon, in this case, great whites, Obviously. use their measurements like tooth measurements, compare it to their overall body length, figure out what relationship that is, and then apply it to the megalodon. This is like the most dumbed down way to describe it, but you remember those, um, wait, hold on. Where's my marker? Where are you going? Remember this shit in sixth grade? Like, like. Wait, that's a whiteboard. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't know that? So what I thought was, it was a picture, like that picture over there. Uh-huh. I thought she just put like a green piece of cardboard over it, and that's how she was projecting the stuff, like with a green screen, just like throwing it up there. You thought it was the most complex version of what it could possibly it be. It made sense to me. <laughs> once you cut it out once, you don't have to cut it out over and over again. You know? Yeah. Who just has a whiteboard in their living room? Probably someone who makes educational Who is she else. making presentations to? Us. But I'm just saying, you understand <laughs> what I'm saying? That could be a picture that you could use in your spare time. Then when you shoot vids, you just put up the green part. And then bada boom, bada bing. Just imagine people just going to her house and then she's like, I need the whiteboard for this. And then just like, I would hella use a whiteboard in our house. I've been thinking about putting one on our fridge. When I customized my wife's work desk the first time, I took the pull-out part that you have the keyboard on, and I put a whiteboard on that. Yeah. So just in case you guys are wondering, you can you can put mobile whiteboards on things. Wherever you like. Wherever them. you want. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Where's my marker? You remember this shit in sixth grade? Like, like this Algebra? shit? And then you'd have to like cross multiply to find X. The body size of Megalodon is X in this scenario. This is a really shitty analogy, okay? It was Whatever. fine. If you got it, good. If you didn't, it doesn't matter. So as <laughs> time has gone on, equations have shifted, variables used have been shifted. So today there are just like so many size estimates for the Megalodon okay. using all different variables. They range from like 30 to 65 feet, mm -hmm. which that's honestly incredible. might just be the size range that existed anyway, because that's what we see with animals today anyway. So regardless, they were humongo. I was right. planning to end the quick stats there and then move on to the I was gonna say, regardless, they were, big. The they were very large. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. You know, when you're the size of a human being, mm -hmm, right, of mm -hmm. a legume, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the difference 
between. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're saying. The yeah. difference between, right. oh, was it 45 feet or was it 90 feet? Like, does it? It starts to get blurred a little bit. Does it really matter? You I'm see that dying. 56 and a half foot megalodon? No, nah, dude, I, I think it was 75 and a quarter foot. Watching people do that online, I think is just their equivalent of just trying to get exact about their descriptions, you know? But they're obsessing over the details too much. Either way, you're getting eaten. Yeah, it's like, over. Like either for you. way, you're dead. It's it's done. Regardless, they were humongo. I was planning to end the quick stats there and then move on to the mix competitor, the Leviathan Whip. However, as luck would have it, some new research was published about the Megalodon that is very relevant to this video. Okay. As I was researching it, it was literally just published. Wow. Would you Damn. believe the luck of that? Remember the placoid scales I talked about in the last shark yes. video, yes. prehistoric shark video, the skin teeth? If you haven't seen that video yet, I suggest you do. You would like it if you're here, but I'll do a quick recap anyway. So, sharks and other chondrichthians are covered in what are called placoid scales. Yeah. They have a core of dentine with an enamel-like cover. And you know what else has dentine and enamel? Teeth. 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 Placoid scales. Yeah. Skin teeth. Even though they are very small and thin, they are fairly resistant to decay and sometimes survive the fossilization process. So they're just out there in the fossil record, just difficult to find. But a group of researchers were able to identify placoid scales in the surrounding mm. rock or matrix Ooh. of a set of megalodon teeth found in Japan. That megalodon and placoid scales. Different groups of sharks have differently shaped placoid scales, uh -huh. which can tell a lot about how water moved around the scales and thus how fast the animal was. Right. In this case, the megalodon's placoid scales did not match those of active, fast swimming sharks, mm. which generally have narrowly placed ridges or keels all so over. They, they actually slow. seem to be more characteristic of an average swimming shark oh. that occasionally had quick bursts of speed to snatch prey. This is a plot twist because the megalodon had previously been determined to be partially warm-blooded or endothermic, mm -hmm. producing their own body heat, which is characteristic really? of modern, active, swimming, fast, hunting sharks. So this also led to new insights on how they burned all that metabolic heat they produced. Rather than using it as active swimmers, as they thought they did, it seems as though the warm-bloodedness allowed them to digest larger pieces of food, mm -hmm. absorbing and processing the nutrients more efficiently. Moving on to the Leviathan whale. If you've never Ready. heard of it, there's a chance you're confused on how you've gone this long without hearing about this giant, fucking apparently ferocious yeah. big fucking whale. The shark is all over the place, so how did the whale get left in the dust? The simple answer is that they were only discovered recently in 2008. The Meg has been known for nearly 200 years. Right. 200 years of discovering new shit with new techniques, franchising the shit out of them, <laughs> gaslighting people into thinking that they're actually still alive in the deep ocean. While the That's my favorite series on TikTok. <laughs> By far. What? Dude, so this guy has this tracker in the ocean that tracks sharks. Nobody can confirm if any of that shit is real. I was gonna say, I like the quotation But part. he's fucking telling people it's like a megalodon and he's like tracking like the, you know, migration of different sharks. But they're running from something, even though it's probably just like, you know. Global warming. Global warming, <laughs> the seasons, tracking other fish. Orcas apparently eat shark livers, so. So he's like circling the parts where there's not sharks, but like megalodon. Big ass shark. Okay. But we just can't find it for some reason. Interesting. It's, it's so much fun to watch. Fascinating. You come across it, don't be like, ooh, it's pseudoscience. No, watch it. Engross yourself. It is so entertaining. It's like a it's like a soap opera for sharks. I love buying into people's conspiracy theories for a short amount of time. Oh yeah. It's always a great time. It's great. The Leviathan whale has only been known to science for 15 years. Well, technically they weren't described until 2010, so we could technically say they've only been known to science for 13 years. Okay. They're scientifically in middle school. Luckily though, what's been unearthed about this pubescent fossil has been able to give scientists a good idea of what they got going on. Actually, let me just make a quick note about their name, because every time I talk about them on TikTok, I get a ton of comments like, you're pronouncing Leviathan wrong. So yeah, <laughs> Leviathan. I didn't say she was pronouncing it wrong, so why are you looking at Like me? you. That's not what I said. You thought she was saying Leviathan. But I didn't say, think she was pronouncing it wrong. I just said, what's a Leviathan? I'm just saying you thought she was saying Leviathan. Stop talking Talk to about me. about them on TikTok. I get a ton of comments like, you're pronouncing Leviathan wrong. So yeah, Leviathan is in reference to the mythical sea monster Leviathan. It's just the Hebrew spelling. It was actually initially named Leviathan Melville, 
Melvilli, Melvilli, Leviathan Melvilli, Melvilli after the author of Moby Dick, Herman Melville. Mm. But it turned out Leviathan as a scientific name was already used for a mastodon. And with uh. how the scientific naming system works, that shit does not fly. Like the whole point of scientific names is so that you have one name to describe one species and right. you cannot possibly get it mixed up with anything else. Got no it. matter right. what language you speak, that's the shit, that, that's, that's it. So they had to change it to Leviathan Melvilli, again, <laughs> the Hebrew spelling, and that's just what it is. So Great. Leviathan Melvilli like was a sperm. It's like when you want to make a license plate with a word, but the word's already taken. Mm -hmm. So you substitute like different numbers for letters and shit. That was actually a really good reference. Like, I'm not going to lie. That's exactly what they did. Yeah. They were like, oh, okay, we can't call it Leviathan. Leviathan we got it. Ten. <laughs> See what we did there? I love it. That's why we get paid the big bucks. Which also reminds me mm -hmm. that the, a judge recently ruled in favor of a Las Vegas man's, or I don't know if he's from Vegas, but a Nevada man's a license plate, which says, go back to CA. Go back to California. That had to be approved? Yeah, they tried to tell him he couldn't have it. Like, Ooh, I think, like, I think. What's the, wrong with that? I think maybe the DMV told him he couldn't have it or something. And, and the so judge, he took them to court over it? What a badass. Because they would have told me that. I'd been like, I mean, I guess, whatever. Just, <laughs> I'll just go with BJ's or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, you know, he's at fucking court. Some <laughs> people are petty to the max. Oh, my God. I really like sperm that. Sperm whale. That was first discovered in Hebrew spelling, and that's just what it is. So, Leviathan melvilli was a sperm whale. That was first discovered in Peru in 2008. Individual teeth of this species have been found all, right. all over yeah. the world. Big-ass peanuts. So, scientists knew that at some point, there was some prehistoric sperm whale in the ocean about 10 million years ago, mm -hmm. but it was kind of just left at that for a while. I don't know how they were able to gloss over that, but whatever. The fossil that was unearthed in Peru changed everything. It that's was a preserved huge. skull that was nearly 10 feet long. Just the skull, yeah. 10 feet long, which based on modern sperm whale comparisons suggests the species could get to 45 to oh 60 feet God. long, about the same size as a modern male sperm whale. So why all the fuss? Why were they thought to be so ferocious? Well, the real nightmare was their mouth. The because teeth, unlike their yeah. modern counterparts, which only had lower jaw teeth used for suction feeding on giant big ass squid, Leviathan <laughs> had teeth in both their upper and lower jaw. And That's these teeth so can get to a brutal, foot long. Dude. Yeah, like the Subway sandwich. Yeah. Well, like the old Subway sandwich. The largest biting teeth of any animal That's to ever cool. exist that we know of. These two characteristics suggest they were chomping like nobody's business. These bitches had an entirely different hunting and feeding strategy than their modern Wait, counterparts. That's Based on hype, the characteristics dude. of the jawbones, Leviathan also had much larger attachment areas for the temporalis, okay. the primary jaw closing muscle that were actually much more similar to modern killer whales. So oh, so that's what I was. So that's yeah, what I was going to wonder about. Right. Is like, are they somewhat related to killer whales? Right. So you mean when, like, the top of your head needs to be massaged, it's because of your biting muscles <laughs> from talking so damn much. You got headaches, man. Shut the hell up. You see that graphic? That, that changed my life just now. Which suggests Leviathan might have occupied an orca-like niche mm -hmm. just on a larger scale. How's that for fucking terrifying? Yeah, Her mouth was about six dope. by four feet open wide, so definitely not as gaping as that of the Megalodon, mm -hmm. but I'd still argue large enough to swallow you and a friend. At least two short people, so like me and a friend. And on top of the fossil <laughs> school is this large concave surface, similar to that of today's sperm whales, which house the spermaceti organ and the melon, two organs used in echolocation. So they were likely oh. able to echolocate. And like other mammals alive today, the Leviathan was most definitely endothermic, which means that just like the Megalodon, the Leviathan and whale would have had really high caloric requirements for their metabolism, so they likely also ate seals and other whales right. alive at the time. The fossil teeth which have been found in no. seals in every timeline just getting sn snacked up, up. Bro. little snack wraps in about 10 to 5 million years ago. Again, since this species is newly discovered to science, I'm gonna guess that time period is gonna either expand mm -hmm. or shift a little bit. Okay. We just don't know enough about them yet to say for sure what the fuck was going on. But despite that, we can definitely very confidently say at some point, the Megalodon and the Leviathan whale inhabited the same waters at the same time. Okay, Likely. who won? I'm ready, I'm, damn it. I'm gonna go Megalodon. Really, I'm going Leviathan for sure. Echolocation. I'm gonna go Megalodon. For a very long time. So head to head, who would win? Well, there's good news and bad news. I'm gonna start with the bad news first. We don't know. We cannot say for sure, for a few reasons. Obviously this question depends on the size of the individuals in question. But so we already just... know that, okay? We, mm -hmm. We're not looking for like a scientific, right. de like definitive like, answer. I'm, I'm... We're looking for a educated guesstimation that I could use to reference in a, you know, hither or wither battle. You know what I'm saying? 
use it for fun party conversation. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because, like, obviously, full-grown Megalodon is going to eat baby Leviathan. Right. Obviously. And vice versa. And vice versa. Babies aren't making it. Or, like, a little crippled, you know, uh... I almost called it Mastodon. Yeah. Uh, well, Meg imagine he's winged, right? <laughs> yeah. You know like, he saying? got his little Nemo fin. That's right. Like, little Nemo fin Megalodon. Yep. He, you're getting ate up, bro. Little, little left scoop. He can't really go straight. It's yeah. always kind of leaning. <laughs> it's over for you, dog. Got like a, a, a Bisbing thing going on there. Oh, my God. It's over for you, you know? Assume average stats across the board for the two species. That aside, the Leviathan whale still requires a lot more research, mm -hmm. new fossil discoveries to create a more well-rounded understanding sure. of what they had going on as a species. And I know this is upsetting to hear, but welcome to science, bitch. Nothing is ever <laughs> given to you straight. But good news, here's the good news. Kay. I'm willing to have fun with it, because who gives a fuck? We're just gonna make assumptions, okay? For the sake of this video, we're gonna make assumptions. Let's assume that the relationship between the Megalodon and the Leviathan whale was kind of like that of today's great white sharks and orcas. Mm -hmm. Since they both mm -hmm. occupied those niches on a larger skip, mm -hmm. they occupied similar habitats, at least temporarily overlapping territory, going after the same prey sources, and occasionally bumping into each other for a little tussle or even a little bite. My money's on the whale. Like, yes. done. Done deal for me, personally. Yes! Okay. Don't put that in. While the Megalodon might have been stronger, had a more powerful bite, right. the Leviathan whale had the upper hand of mammalian intelligence, oh. which we have seen time and time again. Oh. We bitches in the dust. <laughs> I mean, there are two orcas ripping out the livers of great white sharks in South Africa right That's now. Yeah. Like, that is a reference that you made before also. Yeah. Yeah. But also, I didn't factor in intelligence into my guess. Oh, right. Well, big dumb animal, if it's strong enough, doesn't really matter how smart you are. Yeah, but I you just, know? I don't know. I don't think of anything like... Head empty, just vibes. <laughs> Back then, I'm just like, yeah, it was kill or be killed. They were Everybody's just they dumb were... idiot eaters. <laughs> Nobody had any sort of intelligence, you know. Yeah, that's super funny, Thank yeah. You. Excellent, excellent. Like I said, you know, you come here for the facts, you have a little fun. Yeah, of That course. wraps everything up the best way. But I was really hoping she was going to bet on the whale. But when you think about whales as hunters, they're not as flashy as we made the shark. Mm -hmm. You know, but like you're saying, the shark does have that mindset of like, big dumb eater. Yeah. You know, you can't convince him to leave. But that's great for horror films, you know? They, yeah. A big swarm of sharks come into your little city lake. Kids are getting chomped on. Yeah. You know? But, like, we can bargain with whales, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Collective bargaining with uh, Shamu. Collective <laughs> bargaining deals with Shamu. Yeah, dude. So, I mean, orcas are going to take over the world. I'm convinced. You know, so. they, they actually were already terrorizing people this summer, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So just know that their ancestors were doing it long before them. Uh, but yeah, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you come around. Um, you know, my wife is always here, so... Not know. always. Mm -hmm. I just mean like on YouTube. Oh, okay. She's always here, so give her her search. You oh, know what okay. I mean? Go peruse around. She's not always here when I do these vids, but mm -hmm. she's always adjacent on the internet. So uh, extend a hand, you know, uh, and slap a like button. And see like us on the next time. Yes. Infidelity, you know? Like you're cheating on me. With YouTube vids. Yeah. It could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys around. Peace. You're doing one on your channel next, right? Maybe. Right? Maybe. Right. Yes, and you're bringing me. Yes, I am. Right. Yeah. Follow us. Like, turn this off and then just go over there. Yeah. It'll be, just go there. Hopefully it just auto plays, actually. You don't have to do anything. You just kind of lays about <laughs> with, like, your phone on your tummy. And as you're, like, eating, like, food, like, a, like an otter or whatever. <laughs> and then just let it go. Just let it let it play. You like the visual? Yes. <laughs> you don't try to be leaning your phone on shit when you're doing something so you don't have to fucking touch it? No. Yeah, you do, because I watched you do it when you were doing dishes, remember? You had your phone leaned up oh, on I the had dishes. It on the thing. Yeah, yeah, you leaned it up on the dish. Alright, man, I'll see y'all.